your buddy, Barack Obama, uh, is <laughs> going around making speeches. Even though we didn't get the Olympics for Chicago, he's still my buddy. Yeah. <laughs> um, is going around making speeches, talking about the uh, obscene profits of health insurance companies, um, suggesting, sort of demonizing them a little bit, suggesting that uh, they care about themselves rather than their um, uh, rather than their uh, customers. Um, to some degree, that's being done of, about pharmaceutical companies as well. As somebody immersed in the system, do you, when you think about insurance companies and drug companies, do you think bad, evil, uh, money-hungry, or do you look at the incentives of the system and say it's a system problem, it's not the behavior of the people in those institutions? Well, I think it's both. I mean, there's, there's greed in, uh, in most human activity, and doctors aren't excluded from that, patients aren't excluded, and nor are pharmaceutical or insurance companies. But I think one of the reasons why we've had such an impasse is because we're in this very curious kind of circular firing range where everyone's shooting at everyone else within it, and we're not really focusing on what we can all bring to the table. Everyone's going to have to give a little and get a little. That includes doctors, insurance companies, pharmaceuticals. Um, Do doctors need, need to make less money? Uh, under a reformed health system? Uh, they need to justify, we need to justify what works and what has value and what doesn't. Just doing another operation doesn't necessarily add value. We need to respond to the public and the government's very legitimate call for us to establish best practices. Where is it going to happen if it doesn't happen in professional medical societies? And uh, it, you know, it, this has to happen. You know, Alan, as well as I do, that it's very hard in neurosurgery circles for us to take a stand and say treatment A in neurosurgical in the neurosurgical world is better than treatment B. We should be well compensated for the one that shows merit and value, whether that's surveillance or surgery or something in between, and to a lesser degree compensated for something that's just a pile on because it's a fee for service. Could we still have the best medical system in the world if our specialists like the fancy pants neurosurgeons made a little bit less money uh, uh, and the general practitioners maybe made more? Or do you, do you see play in, in, well, in that system? Well, first of all, Alan Friedman's my friend, and his, fan, his pants all fancy are not too fancy. <laughs> and certainly not fancier than yours. <laughs> Would you like to just go on to your next question? <laughs> I'm not letting you off the hook on that one. Uh, look, uh, doctors are well paid in this country, and um, I uh, make no apologies for that. And in fact, patients like to know that um, what we do as doctors and as other healthcare providers is valued and, and is compensated for. So I make no apologies for that. I think that we need to do a better job of justifying what, uh, of identifying what within our work product really has merit, the things that are really making a difference in the public health, be well compensated for those, and then get rid of the things that are really just add on, the, the repetitive test, the duplication of effort, the doing yet another and another and another radiation treatment for someone in their last six months of life. 